the loss of ice by a glacier is termed ablation. In addition to melting, glaciers waste away as large pieces of ice break off the front of the glacier in a process called calving, figure 18.12. Calving creates icebergs in places where the glacier has reached the sea or a lake, figure 18.13. Because icebergs are just slightly less dense than seawater, they float very low in the water, with more than 80% of their mass submerged. Along the margins of Antarctica's ice shelves, calving is the primary means by which these masses lose ice. The relatively flat icebergs produced here can be several kilometers across and up to about 600 meters, 2,000 feet, thick, see the icebergs in figure 18.3 and 18.4. By comparison, thousands of irregularly shaped icebergs are produced by outlet glaciers flowing from the margins of the Greenland ice sheet. Many drift southward and find their way into the North Atlantic, where they can be hazardous to navigation. Figure 18.12 Examples of Ablation A melting at Alaska's root glacier created this river atop the glacier. Notice the large rocks exposed as the ice wastes away. Photo by Michael Collier B. Ice loss by calving at Beloit Glacier When valley glaciers or outlet glaciers terminate in the ocean, they may also be called tidewater glaciers. It is common for large blocks to break off the front of the glacier and form icebergs. Photo by Michael Collier Figure 18.13 Icebergs Icebergs form when large masses of ice break off from the front of a glacier after it reaches a water body, in a process known as calving. Other examples of icebergs appear in figures 18.3, 18.4, and 18.12. Photo by Radius Images slash Photo Library. Figure 18.14 Retreating Glaciers. A bear glacier is a tidewater glacier that flows out of the Harding Icefield near Seward, Alaska. Like most other glaciers in Alaska, Bear Glacier is retreating back into the mountains. Photo by Michael Collier. B. These two images were taken 78 years apart, from about the same vantage point, along the southwest coast of Greenland. Between 1935 and 2013, the outlet glacier that is the primary focus of these photos retreated about 3 kilometers, about 2 miles. National Snow and Ice Data Center. Glacial Budget. Whether the margin of a glacier is advancing, retreating, or remaining stationary depends on the budget of the glacier. The glacial budget is the balance, or lack of balance, between accumulation at the upper end of the glacier and ablation at the lower end. If ice accumulation exceeds ablation, the glacial front advances until the two factors balance. When this happens, the terminus of the glacier is stationary. If a warming trend increases ablation and slash or if reduced snowfall decreases accumulation, the ice front will retreat. As the terminus of the glacier retreats, the extent of the zone of wastage diminishes. Therefore, in time a new balance will be reached between accumulation and wastage, and the ice front will again become stationary. Whether the margin of a glacier is advancing, retreating, or stationary, the ice within the glacier continues to flow forward. In the case of a receding glacier, the ice still flows forward but not rapidly enough to offset ablation. This point is illustrated well in figure 18.9. As the line of stakes within the Roe glacier continued to move down valley, the terminus of the glacier slowly retreated up valley. Glaciers in retreat, unbalanced glacial budgets. Because glaciers are sensitive to changes in temperature and precipitation, they provide clues about changes in climate. With few exceptions, valley glaciers around the world have been retreating at unprecedented rates over the past century. Bear Glacier is one example, figure 18.14a. The photos in figure 18.14b illustrate another example. Many valley glaciers have disappeared altogether. For example, 150 years ago, there were 147 glaciers in Montana's Glacier National Park. Today only 37 remain. 18.